Often when we're talking about radio communications, we're speaking about things that are transmitting data or audio over the air in real time from a transmission source to some receiver elsewhere in the world. However, in today's video, we'll be taking a deeper dive down into the coaxial cables found in most homes today. That's right, today we'll be looking at the signaling that occurs on the coaxial cable for a Doxis 3.0 cable modem for my local internet service provider. Don't go anywhere, because there are truly signals everywhere. Today's video is sponsored by Audible. Sign up today for a 30-day trial at audibletrial.com forward slash signals everywhere for two free audiobooks and support the channel at the same time. Most people don't realize it, but if you've ever taken the time to play around within the administration control panel of your cable modem, you've likely found out that there's a section for your connection status. If you read this page, you're likely to find not only the acquired up and downstream, but also the frequencies of every other channel that's currently available to the cable modem. Now, there may be other signals that are active on the coaxial cable when we check it out with an SDR. However, this is a nice starting point for frequencies that we can check for various activity. Information provided to us by our cable modem, you can see there's already a lot of information here as it stands. Now, if we take the frequencies we're being provided under the channel ID from hertz to megahertz, we get a really clear picture of where we can start looking for various signals on our coaxial cable. The first one we see is the acquired downstream channel that is at 651 megahertz. Now, we also have a uh, chart here that is listed the downstream bonded channels. Now these are listed 1 through 8. These are available channels to use. Um, I'm assuming these are the channels that have been allotted specifically for my cable modem. And these are all modulated as QAM256. And these are ranging in frequency from about 651 MHz to 609, 663, 615, 621, 627, 633, and 639 MHz. We'll go ahead and take a look at all of these on the SDR here in a moment. We also have upstream bonded channels. These are listed channels 1 through 4. These are ATDMA and TDMA signals. And under our channel ID, we have a kilos symbol per second rate instead of a frequency. These are 5120, 2560, 5120, and again 2560. We're also given a symbol rate. However, no frequency to actually give us any indication where along the cable that these signals exist. However, with the use of something like the HackRF Analyzer software, I believe we'll be able to find these fairly easily and maybe even do something a bit interesting with them. So please stay tuned to the end of the video so that you don't miss that. If you recall from earlier, we saw that our acquired downstream channel was at 151 megahertz, and it also happened to be channel one of our downstream bonded channels. Let's go ahead and take a look on a software defined radio. In this case, we're gonna use the AirSpy R2 to take a look at this particular signal and we can see we have our QAM 256 carrier signal running right here and this is our current uh, downstream channel for our cable modem. Now if you recall I only had about eight of these channels that were locked and bonded on my particular cable modem and there are clearly far more than eight here. I believe what I'm seeing is not only signals coming from my own cable modem but in this case because these are my downstream bonded channels these are actually signals coming off of the cable itself, not my cable modem. What this means is that, if I'm not mistaken, the other signals adjacent to my downstream bonded channels are actually downstream bonded channels for other cable modems that happen to be sharing the same piece of coax along my street or possibly my uh, local area block. Now here is where things get really interesting. If you recall earlier, I mentioned we weren't really provided any kind of frequency range for our upstream bonded channels. Well, because of that, I decided to go ahead and get out the HackRF Spectrum Analyzer software and do a wide scan sweep of the spectrum within the coaxial cable. And what I found is right around 2.4 gigahertz, there's actually a bit of, I don't know if it's necessarily spread spectrum, but it's um, packetized data of some sort. Now, here's what gets really interesting. Let me grab my phone and do a quick speed test. I think I just found out what these little bits of data actually are. <laughs> All right. 
right, so maybe I'm just a tad overly dramatic, but this was really cool because this shows me not only is this where my bonded upstream channels exist, but this shows me that anytime I'm doing anything where I'm downloading data from the internet, it is going up this channel. So just by analyzing the radio frequency data at this particular frequency, I can know right away roughly how much data is being downloaded at a given time. And I just find that amazingly fascinating without any type of decoder that we're able to get some sort of information just by looking at the spectrum. Now because there's not a ready-made QAM-256 decoder available, I figured uh, at the very least I could play around with this bonded uplink channel just a bit more. I find it very interesting that unlike some of the other QAM channels that we're not able to really see what's going on without a decoder, this particular bonded channel is working in a way that um, really, you know, it makes sense when you think about it. The only time any data should be on this channel is when you're pulling something down from your provider. And so as that happens, that signal is being generated there for your modem to then pick up and do something with. And it appears even on uh, upload, it's also using this channel. So I think the upstream channel is probably any traffic being communicated from our cable modem out uh, to the network when it's requesting something. Uh, and bringing data back, perhaps. Um, I, I certainly don't know everything there is to know about uh, cable modems and DOCSIS. Very much far from it. Uh, if you are experienced in those things, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment down below uh, on this video uh, because I'd really like to learn a lot more about this. I'm also interested in playing around with GNU Radio and potentially using that to decode some of these channels. From here, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at the first 100 megahertz of spectrum on our coaxial cable all the way up to about 2.6 gigahertz so we can gain a better understanding of what kinds of signals are present on this cable line and hopefully better understand how these systems work overall. While I'm no expert in DOCSIS, and this really is my first time looking at a cable modem's RF spectrum, this is a really interesting view um, just right off the bat. This is the first 100 megahertz of spectrum. Um, this is being seen using an AirSpy Mini. And we see to the left we have some spread spectrum looking things. We have some random packetized stuff that's showing up here and there. We also have some QAM 256 channels, which are likely downstream channels of some sort, or maybe some type of control channel for the cable network. Again, not being super familiar with DOCSIS 3, I couldn't really say for sure. I also see there's also a more narrow uh, signal. I do believe that's also QAM, although I'm not certain uh, what QAM uh, constellation really is. Uh, but I do believe that is some sort of QAM modulation there as well. Up next, we're moving to about 100 megahertz to 275 megahertz. And in here, we're seeing about 28 QAM 256 channels. Again, these are all likely downstream channels, I assume, for other cable modems on the network or on this trunk. If DOCSIS cable systems use trunks, I'm not sure. Uh, from here, we also are going to see a few more of these. If we go to 503 to 700 megahertz, I'm seeing roughly 33 QAM 256 channels. And again, I do believe these are additional downstream channels for other cable modems on the network. From here, we're looking at a big swath of bandwidth. This is the first one gigahertz of spectrum on my cable modem. So we're seeing all of the QAM 256 channels, we're seeing that weird narrow signaling, as well as that spread spectrum. Now, this is a much wider sweep, and it did take a lot more time to generate. It's being sped up so that you can see it more clearly. However, um, there's certainly some detail missing there, and that's why I gave the close-up views in the previous video clips here. Now, from here, we have 2150 to 2600 megahertz, or 2.15 gigahertz to 2.6 gigahertz. This is what I found most interesting, because this is where I believe our bonded upstream channels are. Now, these, I believe, are TDMA, and these are where, from what I can tell, based on what I've shown you so far in this video, is where all of our traffic is being routed when we're asking to download something from the network. 
I don't know about you guys, but I tend to be extremely busy, especially as of late. I recently went on a work trip out to uh, Schaumburg, Illinois, and I do have some cool videos coming up in the very near future um, based on some information and data that I captured while I was out there. But during that busy drive, I was trying to find something to listen to, something I could do on my trip. And that's when I ran into Audible. Uh, they actually had a really interesting book there called GPS Declassified. This particular book is nine hours long and four minutes. The cool thing is, is that you actually get to hear that entire book narrated and read to you. And it's just really cool because it goes over the full history of GPS from the first attempted launch of a GPS satellite, the failures that they've had, uh, you know, the difference between the military and civilian versions of GPS. Uh, it's just really cool, the stuff that they go into. And with our sponsor today, um, Audible.com, you can actually go to audibletrial.com forward slash signals everywhere you'll get not only two books for free from Audible, but you also help support the channel at the same time by using the affiliate link in the description below. With that being said, I thank all of you, and a big thank you as well to my patrons, for whom without a lot of this content would not be possible. You guys are amazing, and I appreciate you all for hanging out and sticking around. I know it's been a while since I've had you know a video kind of come out, uh, aside from you know one here and there so I'm trying to get on a more regular schedule again and I cannot wait to see all of you amazing subscribers patrons and just amazing people in the next one have a great day guys we'll see you